Okay, let's talk about people with uteruses, vaginas, ovaries. In this case, what is the function of the reproductive system? Well, to produce gametes, produce eggs, produce hormones, support a developing fetus should this person become pregnant, and then deliver this fetus to the outside world. Remember, for the first six weeks, reproductive structures in all embryos look the same. Okay, They will either develop in one path or another. So let's talk about what happens. Around six to eight weeks, some major changes occur. Changes are due to the SRY gene. When the SRY gene is not activated at six to eight weeks, certain genes aren't turned on. And then the fetus will develop ovaries. So what is the SRY gene? Well, typically it's on the Y chromosome. And however, because of crossing over, sometimes it ends up on the X chromosome and sometimes it's missing from the Y chromosome, which means in this case, a person would be genetically in terms of their chromosome XX, but in terms of genes has the SRY gene. So due to the presence of this gene, this XX person would not develop ovaries, okay? And this person right here with chromosomes XY but missing the SRY gene would develop ovaries. So defining sex is not as simple as one might think. So when the SRY gene is not present, the ducts and uh, that would be producing uh, testicles and the vas deferens are going to degrade and the ones that produce ovaries and uh, the fallopian tubes are going to mature. And then instead of forming into a penis, it'll form into the labia and the clitoris and the vagina. Okay. So again, you could see the analogous structures, okay, um, beginning the same. And the only difference is whether or not the SRY gene is present. In this case, the reproductive organs are primarily located inside the pelvic cavity. Let's look at the outside first. Okay, so we're looking at the outside, it's the vulva. So when you're looking at a person who has this type of anatomy, you're going to see the vulva. Vulva is just the external genitalia. It includes the part called the mons pubis and the labia majora. Now, I want you to remember something. Not all vulvas, not all vaginas, okay? They don't all look the same. And it's important to understand that because it's not going to look like the pictures always. All right, so the mons pubis, it's a prominent bulge. Um, it's the superior end. It's created by adipose tissue. That's fat. So it's the superior part of the vulva. It's there is, you know, a noticeable bulge. And then we have the labia majora. So uh, meaning lips. So the major lips, the outside lips. So it's part of the vulva. Um, adipose tissue also accumulates here. Um, it encircles and partially encloses the labia minora inside. So the labia minora are those inner lips, and those are covered with smooth, hairless skin, and they cover the vagina and the urethral opening. All right, so here is the vagina. The vagina is an elastic muscular tube. It ends at the cervix. It allows birth and the flow of menstrual blood. Up here is the urethra. It's a passageway for urine to leave the body. And below here is the anus. Uh, that's a passageway for fecal matter out of the body. Um, anal sex involves penetration of the anus. And again, when we're considering safe sex, whether it's oral, whether it's vaginal, whether it's anal, um, we are considering condoms as a barrier method, right? Now, here's what I want to say. Some people just, I guess, aren't aware. Urethra, urine, vagina, anus, three separate holes. All right, then we have the clitoris. Um, and this is the structure in someone with 
um, a vagina that is comparable to the penis. So it contains erectile tissue. It engorges with blood during arousal. Okay, fun fact about the clitoris, most of it is hidden. So here you can see is the glands of the penis, and then you would have the shaft. Well, here is the piece of the clitoris that is most likely going to be visible. But then it has all of this erectile tissue right here, which during arousal is going to swell. So this surrounds the vagina, um, the vagina located here. So the clitoris is more than just that tiny little piece at the top. It's actually uh, quite large. And if you look at it um, in size comparison, that's a 3D printed one. Um, that is size accurate, so it is very large. Okay, the hymen. The hymen is elastic epithelial tissue. It partially or rarely completely blocks the entrance to the vagina, but it does allow menstrual flow. So in those cases where it is completely blocking the entrance to the, to the vagina, it is going to require like a minor surgery to allow menstrual blood flow to leave. The hymen is not really like a breaking thing, it stretches, okay? So it stretches after intercourse, it stretches after using tampons, it can even stretch from masturbation. So it is not an indicator of virginity, okay? Also, not everyone is born with a hymen and hymens look completely different, okay? So again, this is elastic tissue, that may partially, rarely, completely. So in this case, uh, this would require some minor surgery to allow menstrual blood to leave. Okay, but again, is going to stretch over time. All right, the uterus. It's a muscular pear-shaped organ, also called the womb. Uh, the fundus right here, that rounded, um, superior portion, that's what's going to be measured if the person with the uterus does uh, get pregnant. The cervix. The cervix is the neck of the uterus. It is the most inferior part. This is the part that has to efface and dilate to allow the birth of a fetus. Ovary. There's one on each side similar to testicles. It's an almond-shaped organ, it produces eggs, and it secretes hormones. Then we have the fallopian tube, one on each side. It's a narrow tube. Um, it has projections called fibrae that sweep the ovulated egg into the tube and toward the uterus. Uh, inside that fallopian tube is where fertilization would happen if it was going to happen. All right, then we have the bladder, which stores urine. So what happens when a person with a vagina, a uterus, ovaries, when they are sexually aroused? Well, the parasympathetic nervous system does the same thing, causes dilation of the arteries. Blood flow to erectile tissue, but this time to the clitoris increases. Cervical and vaginal lubrication increases, and blood flow causes engorgement of the nipples, uh, which may make them more sensitive or more pleasurable. Then there's orgasm, the powerful rhythmic contractions that occur in the uterine and vaginal walls. It's associated with intensely pleasurable sensations and does cause an increase in heart rate and blood pressure. All right, let's look at egg production. All right, so we have uh, an egg. Now what's gonna happen typically when ovulation is coming around, uh, maybe five to 10 will begin to mature. And then the ovary is like, you, you have been chosen. And that one will continue the maturation process and the rest will kind of just get degraded. All right, so here we have the follicle maturing, maturing, right? Um, maturing, 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 and then ovulation. It is released. Um, this 
still present inside the ovary is what is responsible for some of the hormonal changes and the preparation of the uterine lining, okay? All right, so what is the egg journey? Well, it is going to be released right through the ovary, right? Some people may feel it, okay? About midway through your cycle, if you feel a cramp, it could be ovulation. Um, and sometimes it's a little strong. Then the egg is going to get swept up into the fallopian tube, begin the journey down the fallopian tube. In this first third of the fallopian tube would be where fertilization would happen if it did. And then, regardless, either way, the egg is going to continue its journey down the fallopian tube into the uterus. And if it had been fertilized, it would implant into the lining of the uterine wall. If not, it would go out um, with the menstrual blood flow. Now, in order for fertilization to happen here, for example, that means sperm would have to come up through the vagina, through the cervix, through the uterus, some are going to go this way, some are going to go this way, so some are already going the wrong way, there's no egg there, and then would have to get all the way there. Okay, so it is a long journey. All right, egg viability, about 24 hours after ovulation. So the egg typically survives for 12 to 24 hours after ovulation. And remember, fertilization in the first third of the fallopian tube. And remember, because reproduction is the goal, as far as evolution is concerned, there are some unique features in the reproductive tract. So, ovary, fallopian tube, uterus, this is the fundus, right? Here's the cervix, the neck of the uterus. We have the vagina. The endometrium would be the lining of the uterus, okay? What are some features that would prevent fertilization? Well, the acidic environment in the vagina can kill sperm. There are immune cells that will destroy sperm. The cervix is low and hard, so the opening to the uterus is closed for most of a person's cycle when they have a uterus. Thick cervical mucus is going to make it hard for sperm to actually get through it. So the cervix is low, it's hard, and it makes thick mucus. And the fallopian tubes move the egg toward the uterus, so sperm kind of have to swim against the current. Okay, so these are all the things that are like, oh my goodness, how does it even happen? So how does this reproductive system help fertilization? Well, around the time of ovulation, the cervix moves higher and softer. It kind of feels like your lips, so there's an opening to the uterus. And the cervical mucus thins and it's stretchy. It's kind of like raw egg whites. And contractions of the uterus during orgasm help the sperm move toward the fallopian tubes. They kind of like give them a boost. And secretions in the fallopian tubes help transport both the egg and the sperm and help the final um, changes occur in the sperm that are necess necessary for uh, the egg to fertilize the sperm. All right, two last quick thoughts. Egg count. At birth, a person with ovaries has about one to two million eggs. By the time this person hits puberty, they only have 300 to 500,000 eggs. By the time they're 30, 180,000 eggs. These are just estimates. By the time they're 50, about 1,000 eggs, okay? Only about three to 400 are actually going to be ovulated over the lifetime. Typically, a person with ovaries will go through about 10 times more than that because remember, five to 10 are kind of prepped for ovulation. Then it's like, ah, oh, you are the chosen one. And that's the one that's gonna ovulate. And then wet dreams. You can wake up to vaginal lubrication. This is a healthy and normal part of sleep. It occurs in people with testicles and people with ovaries, and it occurs throughout the lifetime. It just happens to begin in puberty, but it's normal and there's nothing wrong with it. And that is people with uteruses, vaginas, ovaries. I hope you learned something new today.